Let's deepen our understanding of Git, this time by seeing it in action. To do that, let's make sure that Git is installed on our machine. To check, we can go to the terminal and run the command git dash dash version. If git is installed, it will tell us its version. If not, it will say git command not found. In case it's not there, you can install git by running the following commands depending on your OS. Brew install git on Mac, sudo apt-git install git on Ubuntu or Debian based Linux distributions. On Windows, you will have to install git bash by downloading it from this link. Once you have installed it, you will need to do one-time configuration, basically informing git about our name and email which it will use to mark the commits. The command to do that is git config dash dash global user dot name and whatever your name be. Let's also inform git about our email. Dash dash global here means this is a global setting applying to all git enabled directories in this machine. We can check if it has been configured properly by running the command git config dash dash global dash l. Here we can see the email address and name that we passed has been configured. All right, let's clear. In order to learn by example, let's first make a new directory. Let's call it hello world. Now, for Git to actually start tracking things in this folder, we'll have to initialize Git. We do that by running a command called git init. When we do that, we see that a .git folder has been created. This folder has a bunch of important files and folders that are responsible for tracking all changes. Git init initializes an empty repository. A git enabled directory is also called a repository or in short, a repo. Each change in a repository can be an untracked state or tracked state. Git status is the command we use to determine which changes are in which state. Let's run it. It says on branch master. Master is the default branch that Git makes. Branch is simply a movable pointer that points to one of the commits. As you keep making more commits, the branch moves to and points to the latest commit. We'll learn more about it later. Here, we have no commits. And right now, because we don't have any files, there's nothing to commit. Git status basically gives us the current state of affairs in this repo. Another useful command that gives us crucial information about our repo is called git log. Git log gives us the commit history of this repo. Since there are no commits made in this repo, there are no commits being reflected here. So let's go ahead and make a new file called index.txt and add a line. Let's call it hello world save it. Now let's run git status again to see what has changed. It still says on branch master no commits yet but this time it says there are untracked files and untracked files notice are being displayed in red color here. However there is nothing added to commit yet because we don't have anything in the staging area. So first we'll have to move index.txt to the staging area. The way we can do that is by running a command called git add and then the file name that we want to move to the staging area. Let's run it. Let's first clear our screen. Now that we have added our index file into the staging area, let's check the status once more. It says on branch master, no commits yet, changes to be committed and this time index.txt is being displayed in green, meaning it's already in the staged area and it's ready to be committed. We can make a commit by running a command called git commit. It takes an option dash m, m meaning message. We need to provide a message to each commit. The message should signify what changes we made in this commit. So let's just call add index file. Now, when we make a commit, it says we are still on the master branch and this is the root commit, meaning this is the first commit in this particular repo, followed by part of a unique hash that this commit has been assigned. Each commit is assigned a particular unique hash. It basically acts like an identifier for that commit, followed by the masses that we passed for this commit, and then bunch of metadata. Let's run git status again. This time it says on branch master, but nothing to commit working tree clean. That means everything that is there in the working tree is synced or has been snapshotted into a commit. Let's clear our screen. Let's run git log again. 
here we see that there is one commit created this is the entire hash of this particular commit earlier we had seen a part of this here it says head head again is simply a pointer that tells us which branch we are currently on here it means that the last commit we made is on master branch then we have author information and a bunch of metadata and then the masses that we passed along with this commit we can get out of this by pressing Control plus Z. All right, let's make more changes to index.txt. Let's add another line. Say my name. Now to commit it, we'll first add it to the staging area. So we do git add index.txt. But before we finally commit it, let's check the content of index.txt. Oh, looks like I made a typo here. It should be am and not an. Let's fix that. All right, let's run git status again. Here we see that some part of the index.txt is being tracked, whereas some part is not. We can check the difference between the staging area of this file and the working tree by running a command called Git tiff. Git tiff takes in an argument which is the name of the file that we want to see the difference of. Here we can see that this line is part of the staging area, whereas this one, the type of fix that we made, is still in the working tree. So, to avoid the typo being committed, let's move the type of fix change to the staging area. So, we can do that by running git add index.txt. Let's clear our screen. Let's run status again. This time we see that the entire index.txt has been moved into the staging area. And when we check the content of file this time, we see that the typo has been fixed. So the changes that are there in the staging area has a typo fix. So now we can go ahead and make a commit confidently. Through this example, we see that we can prepare ourselves in the staging area before we make a commit. Let's do a git log again. This time we see two commits. This one is the earlier commit, the first commit that we made, which had the message add index file. Now the second commit has another unique hash. And now we see that head is updated. Head has moved from the first commit to the second commit, which is the latest commit that we have here. And so has master. Head, basic, head and master are basically on the same commit. Again, this has a bunch of metadata and the commit masses that we added. Now I'm going to add another file called rdog.txt. I remember creating it before. So I'm just going to copy it from there. Let's just see the location of it. It's here, right here. So we can navigate into our hello world and copy rdog.txt into this particular folder. And we run ls again to see index.txt as well as rdog.txt. Also, I'm going to add another line in index.txt. This time I'm going to say, I love learning. Now, I want to commit these. So I'm going to stage them first by running git add. Okay, let's clear screen. But let's see what I did here. We use dot instead of the file name if you want to stage all files that we have changed in the working tree. Okay, let me check out both the files before I make a comment. So I do git cat add index.txt. This looks good. Then I'm going to also read the content of rdog.txt. Here I realize that it would be better if I actually wrote a para about Pochi before committing this. So I don't want to move rdog.txt from staging to the next commit. But we know that everything in the staging area is added to the next commit. So can we move rdog.txt back to the working tree? Yes, git gives us that control. The command to do that is git restore dash dash staged and the particular file that you want to move. So say rdog.txt. Now we run git status again. Here we see that rdog.txt has been moved back into the working tree, whereas index.txt is still in the staged area. Okay, now I can commit the changes that I made to index.txt by simply running git add hyphen m. This time I can say add more information about myself.
we run status again and then we see that our dog.txt is still in the working tree let's clear and let's run log again here we see that there are three commits now the first one which is add index file second one where i added my name and third one where i added more information about myself now you'll see that head as well as master has moved on to this particular commit this is the commit graph or commit history that we earlier talked about this way we have seen the commands to stage and commit changes all right we learned about a bunch of commands here the most important ones are git status which we can run at any time to get the updates in the repo git add which moves a file from working tree to the staging area git commit which moves a file from the staging area to the committed area let's do this entire flow once more this time i'm going to add another file called altcampus.txt since this project has started getting bigger it would be nice to see all the files in a gui based code editor like how you would do on a real project so let's open an editor called vs code here and open the right folder all right we see all our files here i'm going to add about alt campus alt campus is based in a beautiful hill station also i'm going to add another line about our dog before i make the commit let's say her instagram handle is mountain queen pochi all right this is good enough for a commit however in near future i want to make few more changes to this project so just to remember them i'm going to make a to do list i'm going to do that by making a new file called to do.txt and adding a few to dos for example share more about one pochi and two alt campus now this to do.txt is just a note for myself and i don't really want to commit it in the project ever so i can ask git to ignore this file from tracking we can do that by putting it in a new file called dot git ignore any file or folder named in dot git ignore won't be tracked by git in real world projects we keep files like external packages log files etc in git ignore all right let's commit these changes so first we'll do git status here we see we have changed three files notice that to do dot txt is not part of the tracked files because to do dot txt is being ignored by git now let's move it to the staging by doing git add dot let's run status again we see that all these three files have moved into staging let's commit it by doing git commit add about alt campus and poaches instagram all right we have made the commit let's clear it Earlier we learned that git makes it easy for us to go back in time and see the previous versions of the file. Well, let's see that in practice. First, let's do git log. Right now we are on the fourth commit and it has the latest changes. Let's try to go back and check the content of the project when we were on the second commit where I hadn't added about myself but only my name was present. We can do that by using the unique hash of that commit. So let's copy that and close this the command to do that is git checkout and that commit hash basically referring to that particular commit what this does is that it will take us to that particular commit and reflect that snapshot in our folder but before we go back in time let's see the current version here we have altcampus.txt index.txt and rdog.txt along with .gitignore and to do.txt is being ignored by git so in total we have four files being tracked and the latest version of index.txt has hello world my name and then i love learning line however let's go back in time let's do that by running this it says switching to this commit you are in detached head state well we'll learn about detached head state in the next video for now let's check our working tree here we see that the last line and other three files are missing because we have gone back into the past at this point let's run git log notice that actually we have four commits but here because we are on the second commit we only see two commits the first two commits add index file and then the add name 
A thing to notice here is that head here doesn't point to master anymore because head is pointing to this particular commit, which is what detached head means. When the head doesn't point to a particular branch, but to a particular commit, we'll learn about it in a later video. We can come back into our present state by doing git checkout master, master being the branch name. Now, again, let's check our working tree. Now we see that again, dot git ignore alt campus.txt, index.txt, and our dog is back with index.txt's third line being updated. This way, we have gone back into the time and again returned back to our latest version. Let's run clear.